have had your tea, the doings of Hamish and Dougal. Today, the subsidence adventure. Dougal, you'll have had your tea. No, there's more to life than tea. Why the big smile on your face? I finally did it. I stuck it up in the post office window. <laughs> did anybody see it? Uh, I want everybody to see it. I got Mrs. McVitie to do the lettering on it. <laughs> what does the lettering say? It says, you name it, we're up for it. We? That's what it says on the postcard. Oh, the postcard! Uh, when you said you stuck it up in the window, I thought you no, meant... Oh, no, no, Hamish. You'd never catch me doing that. Uh, well, they caught you last time. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but the magistrate let me off. On the grounds of insufficient evidence. <laughs> oh. No, no, this postcard, if it doesn't drum up business for our new enterprise, I don't know what will. I have a copy of it here. Oh, let me see that. Oh, builders to the gentry. No job too big, no fee too small. Two hods are better than one. Never knowingly underpinned. <laughs> don't bother with Google. Here's His Hamish and Dougal. Oh. <laughs> That'll have them beating a path to the door. Oh, here's the first one now. Mrs. Nochty. I was just beating a path to the door when I remembered the laird asked me to see you. He noticed the postcard in the post office window. Result. And he would like to book a French lesson at half past three. <laughs> uh, that was not our postcard, Mrs. Nochty. Speak for yourself. What? Eh bien, Madame Nochty, trois heures et demie, c'est parfait pour moi et mi lord. A son habitual discipline sauvage. D'accord. Merci bien. A bientôt, madame. Hamish! Hey, what? You never cease to amaze me. I'm discovering there's a whole new sight to you that is an undiscovered continent to me. Well, I had the fishnets and the leather boots. I thought I might as well put them to good use. All right. <laughs> oh, builders, that's it. That's what the laird wanted. He saw the other postcard and he said, get those two builders up to the big house right away. So you'll have to reschedule his French lesson. Oh, sacre bleu. Ugh, come on, you haggis-eating suspender monkey. To the big house. <laughs> Ah, there you are, Mrs. Nochty. It's Hamish and Dougal. I've brought them up the way you wanted. And they're a credit to you, Mrs. Nochty. <laughs> Dougal and Hamish. <clears throat> I'm afraid I've been a very, very naughty boy. Pas devant les enfants. Comment? Leave it out, your lordship. Oh, I didn't realise I had. <laughs> Now, oh, Dougal, I believe you two are starting out in the building business. Erections while you wait. Good. <laughs> I've got a few problems in me sorting out here at the big hoose. Fact is, I've got dry rot, rising damp, falling arches, and a touch of subsidence. So, I wondered if you could give me a quote. Certainly. Half a league, half a league, half a league on earth. <laughs> Into the Valley of Death Road, the 600. Oh, that's a bit more than I was hoping for. Well... <laughs> We could knock a bit off for you. No, how about road the 400? <laughs> Make it quarter of a league and we've got a deal. Oh, done. Now, your lordship, where would you like us to start? My most urgent problem is the eaves. Oh, you poor thing. Put your head between your knees while I get a bucket. If I could put my head between my knees, I'd never leave the house. <laughs> You go and see to the foundations and sort out this subsidence. Very well. What will you be doing? I shall be in the bathroom, rubbing down and making good. All right. <laughs> Let's get to work. What can be taking them so long, Mrs. Nochte? Well, that's builders for you. It's been six months now and they're still standing there. <laughs> moved a muscle. Ah, good news, your lordship. What is it? We can start on Tuesday. <laughs> Slave driver. Though 
I say it myself, that was a good day's work. Let's hope the first of many. I'll away to see how Hamish has got on with those foundations. Daddy on. If you want me, I'll be in the larder. <laughs> Hamish, what is it? The lad did his larder joke again. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, now, how do these foundations look? See for yourself. I've laid them all out on the lawn. What? what? You dug them out? I did. And I'm pleased to report the foundations are all in excellent condition. But, do you, but, but the big hoose now has no foundations under it. Therefore, there is every likelihood that it could... Everything all right? Yes. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, don't be alarmed by those noises coming from the big hoose, Your Ledger. I'm not alarmed. I can see the foundations laid out on the lawn, and they look in perfect condition. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, no, but... come along into the big hoose, and I'll sort your ways out. Quel dommage. <laughs> Well, that's my wallet open. What's the damage? Uh, the damage? Uh, uh, none at all. I mean, what do I owe you? Oh, for the damage. Damage? <laughs> what damage? Oh, 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 let's get out of here. Oh, don't worry, Hamish. We often hear noises. This is an old hoose. Where's Mrs. Nochty? She's upstairs in the bath. Ah, there she comes now. I haven't ridden a bath downstairs since rag week at Housekeeper's College. Oh, don't be embarrassed, Mrs. Nocte. You're quite decent. It is a bubble bath. It wasn't when I got into it. <laughs> oh, I don't know where to put my face. That's the least of your worries. <laughs> nice tattoo, by the way. Oh, thank you. It's a pattern I got from Woman's Weekly. <laughs> I swear I felt the ground move just then. So did I, Dougal. You must do this more often. <laughs> well, Edship, I hope you don't mind me butting in, but uh, did you see a tree go past the window just then? My answer to that is yes, I do mind you butting in. <laughs> the hoose is accelerating down the hill. And we all know what lies at the bottom of the hill. Yes. Do you know if this hoose stops at the post office? If it doesn't, we'll all end up in the loch. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Careful, everybody. Nobody move. Look, it's leaning at an alarming angle. It's a few years since you last said that. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Oh. 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 Well, here we are upside down. <laughs> and it's all gone dark. Hamish, your kilt's over your head. <laughs> Reminds me, I must defrost those turkey giblets for the weekend. <laughs> right, everybody, listen to me. This is a little song I first heard at my mother's knee. She had a tin leg that picked up Radio Caroline. <laughs> <clears throat> Strangers in the night, exchanging glances. Shh, be quiet. Did you hear something? Yes, you singing. Be quiet. <laughs> What are we going to do? Here we are, trapped upside down in the big hoose in the lock. This reminds me of a film I once saw. Yes, me too. In fact, we saw it together. Oh, that was you, was it? If I'd have known at the time, I'd have kept my hand on my popcorn. <laughs> right, let's examine the situation. Here we are in the library, and we need to get up to the door 15 feet above our heads. Now, you know those ladders they have in libraries? so you can reach the books on the top shelves. Yes. Well, I've always wanted one of those. <laughs> I've never been able to see the top shelf books until now. Good Lord, is that a rather damp Lady Chatterley? No, it's me, your lordship. So it is. <laughs> so it is. Could you pass me that filthy magazine? Now, listen, if we all stood on each other's shoulders, the top one could reach that door. I'm game. Sorry, force of habit. <laughs> It's all right, your ladship. Nobody's hurt, apart from Hamish. Now, now here's what we do. Your ladship, get up on my shoulders. Right home. 
Huh? Oh, now, Mrs. Nochty, up on his lairdship's shoulders. I'm there. Hop, hop. Oh! Don't look down, Mrs. Nochty. And Hamish, up on Mrs. Nochty's shoulders. Here I go. Hop, hop, hop. Oh! Don't look up, Mrs. Nochty. <laughs> right. We have now formed a human ladder. When I give the word, we all scramble up each other to the doorway 15 feet above us, all right? Um, yes. Fine. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Oh. And here we all are. That wasn't too difficult, was it? No, though a little implausible. But how are we going to get out? Well, if I remember that film right, they attracted attention by tapping on the pipes. Aye, good idea, but I, I don't see any pipes. Oh, I know where to find the pipes. Then what are you waiting for, woman? Off I go. Here we are. Enough pipes to go round. Splendid. And I've brought you a good supply of shag tobacco to go with them. Light up, everybody. Are those not the wrong kind of pipes? I thought you might say that, so I brought these as well. <laughs> uh, no, no, those are the wrong kind of pipes, too, under any circumstances. <laughs> I think what we need are water pipes, Mrs. Norty, so that we can tap out our messages. Oh, you mean like these? <laughs> Good work, Mrs. N. Right, everyone, start tapping. Eh, uh, uh, just a minute, just a minute. Mrs. Nochty, where did you get these pipes from? From the post office. But how did you... Well, I swam ashore, popped into the post office, got the pipes. I'd previously noticed they had them on a special offer this week. And then Boatman Tam the Boatman rode me back here in his dinghy. Mrs. Noxley, where is Boatman Tam the Boatman now? In his boat, tied up outside the bathroom window. Who tied up Boatman Tam the Boatman? Oh, that was me, saving him for later. Oh, then we're saved. To the boat. Yes. Mrs. Noxley, you untie Boatman Tam the Boatman. Dougal, you help with the oars. Hamish, you take the rudder. And me, I'll take your money for the tickets. Hooray! <laughs> again and Stony Brook. If you ask me, it was a bit mean of the lad to refuse to pay us a penny. Aye, especially as he's making a fortune running cruises to the Hebrides aboard the big hoose. Mm. <laughs> and I tell you this, I've had enough of this building game. Me too. Leave it to the experts. From now on, we should stick to what we know. Aye. Uh, I once stuck to something I didn't know and it wasn't a pleasant experience. <laughs> Ah, ah, Mrs. Nochty, thank you for bringing in the tea. Walnut whip. Now you're talking. Oh, what the devil was that? I've been a very, very naughty boy. <laughs> Tis a boo, cochon. <laughs> <laughs> You have had your tea. The Doings of Hamish and Dougal was written and performed by Barry Crow and Graham Garden, with Alison Steadman as Mrs. Nocty and Jeremy Hardy as the Lair. Music was arranged by John Garden and performed by Pete Rosser, Kylie Davies, Ross Stephen and Sean Randall. The producer was John Naismith.